Now, for the most part, obviously, I try to get the camera as still as I can. You'll see these two blue lines now. One starts on top of your head, and this is the better thing on the right. It stays there. This one here now, you can see the head now is slightly above the top of that blue line. When you get to the top of your backswing, you have moved down a little bit there. As you're sort of completing your backswing, there is a little bit of a drop to there. So when you get to the top of your backswing here now, that's kind of basically the top of your backswing, blue line across the top of your head. And you watch this one here now as you go back. Oh, that's where the camera, where the camera moved to there. There you go. But that to me is there's less spine tilt now, as in you're not so much this way, you're a lot more that way with your spine okay, at the top of the back. So, okay, you look at the drop now in terms of your downswing here. Before that club's even gone down a frame or two, your head's moving quite a lot down there in that downswing. Whereas this one here now, as you start unwinding, okay, that's staying a little bit nearer the blue line and staying on there. This one now is coming back up and further behind the golf ball as you come to the impact. This one here now, you get on top of the golf ball a little bit more and then coming through. It doesn't seem a lot when you're seeing it on camera, but when you feel it, it feels massive, doesn't it? Okay. Yeah. Obviously, from your point of view now, I think but one thing just to pinpoint there, we haven't sort of discussed, already, that ball sometimes creeps a bit further forward than you want to, which obviously will encourage you catching it a little bit later. To me, ball position is measured off your sternum. Okay. If your sternum, when you come back through, gets back behind the golf ball, that will be the low point of your golf swing. So a couple of those fatty, telly ones could be the ball's a bit too far forward. So just be mindful of that. And if we can get to the top of the back swing here now, and your first move now is more your hips moving to the left there and your body sort of staying there, your head's not dropping quite so much and therefore not throwing back quite so much. At least over the ball there now you've got a chance of striking it with a bit of a cleaner strike instead of straighter when you're in the golf ball, okay? This one is a big drop, that, that big drop there, that's basically a known. If you get down there with that big dropping here now, you've got to, make, you've got to react to that, which then means you're coming back up and away. So you see how much your head's moving from sort of there down to your left and then back up to the right down that red line and yeah you kind of figured out where the ball was in relation to you but it just took a little bit more kind of adjusting and when you didn't adjust properly it was either way left toey to the right fat or just awesome but you know which you're going to get any, any given time and again when you're playing golf you're using your eight iron for a second shot maybe you're then using your eight iron six holes later maybe five holes later potentially it could be the next hole it could be three or four holes later people are on the mac for example Tee off on the first of the driver, I'm assuming. Second shot's probably going to be a hybrid or some longish club. Then maybe a pitch on the green. Second I'll be a drive through the trees, potentially to the gap. That might be a short time to the green for your second shot. I doubt you'd be playing a short time on the third, because it'd be a long second shot into that green. The fourth, you may hit a short time. Fifth, depending on how good your drivers, you won't be in a short time. Sixth, depending on which tee you're playing, won't be a short time. Seven might be. So three, three holes there in the first seven holes using an 899 wedge. The rest are going to be longer clubs or pitching because you're hitting a second shot close to green on a par five. So three shots in, or seven hours, hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> Not going to be easy to adjust to how much here and where we're going, and that's based on a flat light. Yeah. So if we take away the element of practice, we always practice in perfect, okay? Flat light, multiple shots, multiple swings in a short period of time. On a golf course, it's not a flat light. It's a softer ground as well. The surface is a lot softer, yeah? You get it wrong on the grass out there now, it's just chunking the glove in the ground, isn't it? So then, of course, then you're fearful of fatting it because, well, if I hit the ground now, it's going to go bloody nowhere. Thin is better than fat. In the wind, they say thin to win. At least catching the ball clean, it's going to go somewhere. Hitting the ground first, it's going to go nowhere, is it? So you're always then reacting to that sort of shot there. And that's why your game's consistency level is going to be dropping a bit because you're <laughs> trying to move around here and everywhere, making it very difficult to adjust. Okay, Does that kind of makes sense, that sort of yeah. sequence there and what's going on. Okay, so if we can get to the top of the backswing here and try for a bit more kind of hip turn there first rather than the big sort of drop down with that left shoulder, your left shoulder was going to go this way and up and around. Yours from here was going kind of there and then down quite steep uh, that way. So a big drop kind of there with the left shoulder and then sort of then come back up out of the way to find some room. So, okay, mate?